Welcome back. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to fold this leaf petal for um, a finished flower arrangement. This petal forms one fifth of the entire flower. If I unfold it here for us, you can see that we've got some fractions that are involved with this model. Okay, if I unfold this, you'll see that I have a square and it's divided into fourths, right? We have one horizontal and one vertical line dividing it into one, two, three, four sections, so we have fourths. In two fourths of those sections here, we have some other divisions. Now, this is not perfect fractions because these areas aren't all divided up evenly, um, but there are divisions in there. Okay. One thing that we're going to learn about origami is every time you fold the paper, you're dividing up the sections of paper. And also with origami, that everything you do in origami, or most things that you do in origami, you create symmetry. And when you have symmetry, each side of your model is exactly the same. Okay. So. To get started, you will need an A5 piece of paper, or if you'd like to make a bigger model, you can use any size of paper. You'll just need to keep all of your sizes the same, so the proportions are the same. To get started, you're going to need an origami square. So take the top horizontal edge, fold it down to meet the uh, vertical edge of your paper, and once those two edges are parallel, Take your bone folder or your fingers and crease right along the diagonal line. You'll notice that this is a right triangle and if we cut the bottom edge off of our A5 piece of paper, you will have a perfect square. The first thing to notice about our square is it's divided in half. So we have a fraction, right? We've divided our paper in half and we have two sides. Take the bottom triangle and fold it up so that you see the right triangle this way and the open part is at the top and the fold is at the bottom. Then we're going to fold our paper and divide it in smaller sections. Take this corner and fold it up to the top corner here. As you do that, you're dividing this half of your paper in half yet again. And you'll see you have another right triangle here and underneath there you would have, I'll take my pencil here to illustrate, you would have another right triangle. This larger triangle be being divided in half. Okay, now you take the other side and do exactly the same thing. Corner to the top, valley folding it so that you have the sides being symmetrical. Okay, now that we have that section divided in half, it should look something like this. At this point, we're going to take this section and sort of divide it in half. If we were dividing it in half, we would put a crease here. But we're actually going to divide this section in half on a diagonal. So you're going to take this inside edge and fold it towards the outside edge to create an isosceles triangle. It should look something like this when you're done. And when you're done, this edge here should be horizontal with the bottom of your original triangle. Okay. Repeat this step on the opposite side, folding the inside edge to meet up with the outside edge, creating an isosceles triangle so that this line that's horizontal runs all the way through your model. Okay. Now we're going to do a little tricky squash fold. We're going to take this triangle here, unfold it and lift it so it's pointing straight up in the air. Then you're going to take this triangle and separate it. If I flip my model up so you can see inside, it will look something like this. You're going to take this crease that's on the top edge and you're going to squash it down to line up with this crease that's on the interior of this space. So this is what it will look like. You're just going to take this and press it down and it should follow those folds that you already made. And you will have this kite shape of two isosceles triangles from dividing that one in half. Okay, so this whole kite shape is divided in half. Now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Take this triangle, fold it straight up in the air, separate these two flaps of paper, and this 
crease here folds flat down so that you see this kite shape divided in half with that fold line right there. Now, you're going to take this flap here that's um, above uh, this line and you're actually going to fold right along that line so that this triangle is folded down. Okay? It should, the fold should line right up with this to kind of create the vision of this straight diagonal line. Now do the same thing on the opposite side. Like that. Okay. Now we're going to take these two triangles and you're going to fold this outside edge over to meet this other edge of the triangle. So it's going to look more like that when you're done. Okay, so at this point, you'll see that we have an acute right triangle. You're going to do the same thing on the left side. Fold this flap up, valley folding it to make an acute right triangle there. And you'll see now we've got this diamond shape. It's actually a square. And we've got these acute right triangles here and this acute triangle on the inside. Now I'm going to take the whole model and fold it gently without making a crease. I'm just going to kind of rotate the paper this side here and this side here, rotating them and putting them together like this. Okay. Now in class, depending on what your teacher has available, you can glue those two um, edges together or you could tape them together and this would form another section to your flower. So now I have two fifths completed, whereas we only started with one fifth. Now we have two fifths, and you're going to complete the remaining parts of our fraction. And that's how you complete the petal for the math flower.